Welcome to Abundant Excursions. We understand that travel is more than just a destination. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We offer the perfect blend of luxury and adventure to create the ideal holiday getaway. From romantic beach escapes to exotic island retreats, we will work with you to find the trip that speaks to your heart. We specialize in romance and group travels, planning a honeymoon, an individual or a group intimate celebration. We got you. What are you waiting for? Send us a message. Abundant Excursions, your luxurious access to the world. All righty, all righty. So we are here this afternoon with none other than Rose from Europe Express. <laughs> and so Rose is going to tell us all about Germany and um, give us more insight as to what we need to learn about Germany. For those who've been to Germany before, I would love to hear from you to see what your favorite sites have been. For those who are interested in going to Germany, please get all the nuggets that you can get from watching this um, Lunch and Learn today. And if you have any questions, feel free to make sure you drop them in the chat and we'll be, do our best to try to answer those questions for you, okay? All righty, so without further ado, we're going to get started. I think I need to sh give you access, Donna. Uh, yes. Of course. <laughs> I forgot to always do that. It's all there right. We go, we go through it? it all the time. It's, yeah. it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. and, and anyone who's watching this for the, you know, the third, fourth time or they, they know, they know we're not prepared to do this. So <laughs> let me just um, let me do this first. Just stop my video and share my screen. So you should all be able to see my uh, PowerPoint presentation currently. Angela, if you could just uh, say yes or no to me that you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna start by first saying Servus, which is really just a friendly greeting used by many Germans in the South and also by Austrians. If you've joined our, our series before, you know that I come from not only Germans, but also Austrians. I'm first generation American. Um, and I'm just going to welcome you today to customize European travel with Europe Express and Abundant Excursions. As Angela said, I'm Rose Schwartz. I'm one of the business development managers here for Europe Express. And I'm a friend to her, a partner to Abundant Excursions. I am a lover of travel. And really today, I mean, I always say this, but really today, I am super happy to be your guide into foreign independent travel. So in this half hour or thereabouts, I'm just going to introduce you to Europe Express, how we partner with Abundant Excursions, and how we can really create magical itineraries that are bound only by your budget and your imagination. We're going to take a look at a sample customized independent European itinerary where we're going to feature Germany, and we'll review some of the travel components we can offer. We'll discuss what you should know, and most importantly, how to book your adventure. So I'm going to get started by telling you a little bit about Europe Express. So Europe Express is a tour operator which is based in the United States, working exclusively with travel advisors to really help them to design extraordinary independent European vacations for their clients, which would be you watching this today. So we actually focus specifically in four different areas of expertise. The first is customization. No trip should look similar to another. You are really worthy of a European adventure as unique as you are. Then we have indulgence or indulgent travel. It's all about, you know, your private over the shared sightseeing, the pre-book private transfers, hotel room upgrades to give you the most luxurious stays imaginable, maybe upgrading that air to business or first class, maybe upgrading that rail again to first or premier class. 
And then we have discovery and transformation. So discovery is going to be one of the best ways for you to really immerse yourself in the history, culture, and cuisine of a destination and to seek that authentic experience away from the crowds. This really does mean getting into the heart of each one of those countries by getting into those little cities and towns that are really less visited than others. And then transformation or transformative travel, that's all about expanding our horizons, adopting new perspectives, and focusing on our well-being. So what I really want to convey here is that we're not your typical motor coach tour company where, you know, all the hotels and the sites and the destinations are chosen for you. With Europe Express, you are on your own schedule. You decide just how, where, and when you want to travel. So a little bit about our product line. Europe Express is truly that one-stop shop for independent European vacations for your travel advisor. We do have air contracts with all the major carriers and offer all classes of service from that economy to the business and first class. We do offer accommodations for every budget, those three, four, and five-star hotels. So nothing lower than a three-star with Europe Express. We can do castles and villa stays, paradors and posadas, B&Bs and a apartments. We do have over 600 sightseeing options from your private and your shared options to basic hop on hop off tours and fast track entrances. Uh, special interests such as beer and wine or history and culture can also be arranged. And then we offer those shared private and executive transfers really to make sure you get safely from one point to another, from the airport to the hotel, hotel to the train station, train station to the cruise port, or really wherever it is you'd like to go. And if you're looking to chart your own course through a destination and get behind the wheel of a car in Germany, that's something that everyone wants to do is to get on that Autobahn. We're going to help Angela arrange that car rental for you. And then, of course, when you choose to vacation in Europe, odds are you'll probably travel by rail at some point during your stay. It's going to be easy. It's quick. It's affordable. It's scenic. It's eco-friendly, multi-generational. And I say it on every webinar as well. It's a little bit romantic. So I'm going to ask that you discuss all the destinations, your interests, the type of air travel accommodations that fit your budget with Angela. And then she will work with our staff to secure that quote, to get you the best possible package pricing and to book your European adventure for you. So now you're saying, okay, Rose, that's all great, but what are the benefits to me? What other benefits are there? So Europe Express is an established tour operator with over 30 years of experience in this marketplace. So since our inception in 1990, we have worked exclusively with travel advisors, again, to help them to create these amazing independent vacations. We have a U.S. team that is really comprised of knowledgeable passionate and well-traveled reservation specialists. These ladies and gentlemen have lived, worked, studied in, and traveled through these European countries extensively. So they know the destinations, but they also know our products inside and out. Really can help Angela to put it all together for you. As far as our product is concerned, we do have an office in Barcelona. This office is there to help us not only in hand selecting our products and doing the contracting for these products, but most importantly for you, we offer a 24-7 emergency support hotline. So when you're traveling, you know that you're in the best hands with Europe Express because we do have that 24-7 emergency support for you. So let's move on to Germany. Germany is the very heart of Europe and we can hear every pulsing beat in its folk music, its vibrant and lively festivals, the fortified beer and hearty cuisines to charming castles, the romantic towns, the fairy tale routes to snow-capped elves, the babbling brooks, and also their echo of their historical past. With more than 49 million Americans claiming German descent, we can all agree that when we travel to these countries, we are welcomed into their Gemütlichkeit. While we won't be able to get through all German cities and towns, I'm going to focus on some of the main areas that attract North American visitors, what to see and do in each, and where to stay. Now, Driving on the Autobahn, we talked about this, is really a dream for every car enthusiast. And through Angela and Europe Express, we can make that happen. Then there's also 
Rail. So Deutsche Bahn is the German rail carrier. Pre-pandemic operated more than 40,000 trains daily on its 33,000 kilometer long modern rail network between its 5,700 train stations. It carried 7.3 million customers daily. This network offers travelers many types of options from those high-speed ICE trains. So they're not called ICE, but it's ICE trains uh, that can travel at top speeds of up to 320 kilometers per hour to intercity trains or IC trains, to the EC Eurocity trains, to regional and commuter trains such as the S-Bahn, which is the Stadt Schnellbahn or rapid city services like kind of like the Metra in Chicago, for example. And then you have the U-Bahn or Untergrundbahn, which is the underground. So that acts as like Chicago's L-Train system. So Germany's capital city, Berlin, is its largest and most populous by far. While you could certainly while away the hours of your hol holiday just by meandering through Berlin's vast network of streets and neighborhoods, a trip there would not be complete without learning the history of the city. From its beginnings in the 13th century to becoming the capital of the Kingdom of Prussia to the Holy Roman Empire and its fall in World War I, its tragedy on the world stage during World War II, the Cold War in the 1980s, to really the vibrant and artistic city that it's become today. Europe Express really has the sightseeing options to bridge the generations. So our first is the private classic Berlin. Political events profoundly changed and have shaped Berlin over the decades. And on the private classic Berlin tour with English speaking guide and driver, we offer an introduction to every history aficionado. On this eight hour tour, we dive into the history of Berlin. Once the residents of the Hohenzollern capital of the German Empire and of the German Democratic Republic or DDR, the Weimar Republic and the capital of the Third Reich. Following the end of World War II, Berlin was occupied by the Allied forces and divided into four zones. From 1961 to 1989, the East and West were divided by a wall. And after its ultimate fall and the reunification of Germany, Berlin became the capital again. The Potsdam Conference was held in Potsdam at the Sicilianhof Palace from July 17th to August 2nd, 1945. Participating countries in the conference were the US, the Soviet Union, and the UK. Leaders gathered here to decide how to administer Germany, which had agreed to unconditional surrender nine weeks earlier on the 8th of May, 1945. Victory in Europe Day. Along with world history, Potsdam has, is also really home to San Susi Palace, the Prussian Versailles, built in 1740s as a summer estate of Prussian King Frederick the Great. On the Potsdam and San Susi Sheard tour, you'll visit the town of Potsdam, which has become famous for its splendid palaces and gardens with a stroll through the Dutch Quarter and the Russian colony Alexandrovka. And then Potsdam is situated just outside of Berlin and is home to the Palace of San Susi. An extensive tour of San Susi Palace is included in this specific tour. And San Susi, you may not think that, I mean, that's not German, right? That's French. Um, but that comes from it being the German Versailles. And it really means without worries. So in Berlin, we do recommend the H10 Berlin Kudam. It's a four-star hotel located on the Joachimsthalerstrasse, just off the Kudam or Kurfürstendamm Street in Berlin's Charlottenburg neighborhood. This hotel is within a 14-minute walk to the KDW or Kaufhaus des Westens, which is the second largest department store in Europe after Harrods in London. It is also a seven-minute walk to the Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church, which is really the symbolic center of West Berlin. The H10 Berlin Kudam also offers 
199 air conditioned accommodations with mini bars and laptop compatible compatible safes 32 inch flat screen televisions with satellite channels there's free wi-fi it's air conditioned smoke free there's a 24 hour front desk 24 hour fitness center with sauna restaurant bar and room service so just a little bit about food. We're, we're talking about lunch and learns, right? So I threw a, a lot of food <laughs> into this presentation today. So sausage or wurst is, you know, in Germany is a main staple. There are an estimated 1,500 varieties, each with their own ingredients, spices, and preparation methods. So the currywurst is popular in Berlin. Sorry, I skipped ahead. Currywurst is popular in Berlin, where history points to Herta Hoyer, where in 1949, she skillfully obtained curry powder from British soldiers. She mixed it up with ketchup and added other spices and poured it over grilled pork sausage. So moving on to Bavaria. Bavaria is Germany's largest federal state in land mass at approximately 70,000 square meters and second only to Nord Rhine-Westphalia in population, which is about 13 million. Munich is Bavaria's capital and is molded through tradition in its annual Oktoberfest celebration. It's fortified in architecture and landmarks such as the neo-Gothic Neues Rathaus or the town hall, where the popular glockenspiel chimes and reenacts 16th century stories. And it's really steeped in history in its infamous beer halls and their role in the beer hall putsch of November 8th, 1923, when Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party led an unsuccessful coalition to attempt to overthrow the German government. Now, contained within its city limits, visitors will find the Nymphenburg Palace and Park pictured on this slide. It was built between the 17th and 19th centuries as a summer residence for the Bavarian electors and kings. And Nymphenburg Palace was inhabited by Max Emanuel, who was son of Ferdinand Maria and Henriette Adelaide of Savoy. Now again, Bavaria has a long history of beer culture from those monks and their breweries in the Middle Ages to the famous Reinheitsgebot, the purity law of 1516. So German beer sets really the standards for quality and the taste of beer. And on our Munich beer tour, we learn why Munich is the center of German beer culture. Guides will give us information and insights into the brewing industry in Germany and in Bavaria overall. And we can't forget the castles. There are Royal Castles, Neuschwanstein and Linderhof shared tour. We're gonna visit two of the most prominent of Mad King Ludwig's the second castles. So Neuschwanstein was inspiration for Disney's castle. And then you have Linderhof, the smallest and only castle of the three commissioned by Ludwig in which he lived and saw the completion. There's also going to be a short stop in Oberammergau for some shopping. We'll talk about Oberammergau a little bit later. Also in the summer of 1945, during the closing months of World War II, the world was learning of the liberation of the Nazi concentration camps. In 1933, Dachau, one of the prettiest of medieval towns in Bavaria, was selected to be the site of one of the most notorious camps in this history. So while each camp was responsible for its own particular form of barbarism that distinguished, you know, what distinguished Dachau was that almost everything that happened in the system as a whole happened at some level there. And almost every category of victim passed through its infamous Arbeit macht frei, or freedom through work gate. German dissidents, you had the antisocials, people who simply did not fit in, the Sinti and Roma gypsies, peoples who were uh, outspoken clergymen, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the homosexuals, the Jews, Polish civilians, and all 
you know, all in all, citizens of some 34 nations. Now, today's memorial site combines the historical authenticity of the original environment and its many surviving buildings with the function of a modern exhibition center. It's a place of memory, of pilgrimage, and of education. To visit it can be challenging, absolutely, but also a deeply moving and memorable experience. Guides do offer detailed knowledge of the history and the character of the concentration camp. They are trained to convey this often difficult and disturbing material with sensitivity and dignity and respect for the victims and without cheap sensationalism. In Munich, we recommend the Eurostar, Eurostar's Grand Central. It's a four-star property located near to the Hakebrücke Espan stop with a 10-minute ride to the Marienplatz and that Glockenspiel and the, sh uh, the sh shopping around that site. It's 11-minute walk to the Augustina Brewery, 14 minutes to the Lowenbrau Brewery, 16-minute walk to the Theresien Wiesen or the Oktoberfest Fairgrounds. You might know them as the Oktoberfest Fairgrounds. The Eurostar Grand Central offers 247 accommodations with mini bars and laptop compatible safes. There's a pillow menu available, flat screen televisions. There's free Wi-Fi, it has air conditioned, smoke free with designated smoking areas, 24 hour front desk. There's a fitness center with indoor pool, restaurant, bar and room service. So we talked about beer already, but you know, beer is a major food group in Germany with over 1300 breweries producing 5,000 brands of beer. Bavaria alone is home to 647 of those breweries with six of them in Munich. You have the Hofbrauhaus, the Lohenbrau, the Augustinerbrau, Paulander, Hockershore, and Spaten. And to talk about worst, worst, worst again, in Munich, we have the Weisswurst, which traditionally can only be served until midday because of the lack of preservatives used in making it. Weisswurst is normally boiled. Uh, I couldn't find a proper photo for you. As a German, I should have a proper photo, um, but it's delicious nonetheless, and definitely with some of these fried potatoes and the grilled onions. So let's talk about Germany's themed roads. Germany really has a number of themed roads which can be traveled either by train or by car. And the first of these that we're gonna to highlight today is the Romantic Road. The suggested itinerary on this road features visits to Würzburg, the capital of Lower Franconia, and one of the loveliest Baroque cities in Germany. It's the center of the Franconian wine production. It's situated on the banks of the Main River, or the Main River, and surrounded by grapevine-covered hills. It's really a popular tourist stop on the Romantic Road. Then there's Rotenburg up the Tauber. It is a small idyllic town on the Tauber River. It is dotted with half timbered buildings encircled by a completely intact city walls. You can take a stroll on the rampart passing through towers, which were part of its defense system. Rotenburg is also home for the year round Kede Wolfart Christmas store. So if you're into Christmas shopping and Christmas ornaments and holiday everything, this is the place to go. Then there's Dinkelsbühl and Nordlingen. There are uh, two other towns on the Romantic Road that boast fully intact city walls. Dinkelsbühl has unspoiled medieval townscape with an 800 year old history. It's really known for its Kindertsek. It's an annual festival that commemorates the surrender to Swedish forces in the 30 years war and a child's plea that saved the town from destruction. Then you have Nordlingen. It's most compared to Rotenburg, and aside from the history and architecture that resembles Rotenburg, it is just as pretty, immaculately clean, and less visited. So fewer, you know, fewer tourists milling about. But take a good look at this photograph. Tell me what movie it reminds you of. Bet you didn't know that although most of the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was filmed in Munich, the last scene of the movie is an aerial shot of Nordlingen. 
Then we have Füssen. Füssen is a town that is an ideal starting point for visiting Neuschwanstein Castle and Hohenschwangau Castle. Neuschwanstein, again, was a castle built by King Ludwig II, being the inspiration, of course, for Disney's castle. Its surroundings are so beautifully breathtaking. We're also, you know, these were also used for backdrop, scene, backdrop scenes in The Sound of Music. Hohenschwangau Castle, which can be viewed from atop Neuschwanstein Castle, is a 19th century palace, which was the childhood residence of King Ludwig II. On our shared Romantic Road day tour from Munich, we travel the Romantic Road, first reaching Harburg, one of the oldest and biggest and best preserved castles um, of southern Germany. Then we continue through the Schwabian landscape, passing Dinkelsbühel and arriving Rotenburg, which again is the most perfectly preserved medieval town in Europe, where you will have time for sightseeing, lunch, shopping. We return to Munich via Hallertau, and this is the world's largest hop growing area. The second most fascinating themed road in Germany is the fairy tale road. So the suggested itinerary features visits to Hanau. Hanau is a lovely Hessian town known as the gateway to the German fairy tale road. It is the birthplace of the brothers Grimm, Jakob and Wilhelm, who are honored through a monument which sits in it, the front of town hall. Now then there's Steinau. Steinau is a town where the Brothers Grimm spent their childhood. The Grimm family home houses a museum containing exhibits on the famous brothers' lives and works of art in their writing. Then we have Kassel. Kassel is the capital of the German fairy tale road with its Lohenburg Castle, a romantic neo-Gothic ruin. Then we have Willemsthal Palace and parks, green spaces, museums. It is a town not to be missed. There's a stop uh, to Sababerg to visit the Sleeping Beauty Castle and another stop in Trendelborg for a visit to Rapunzel's, Rapunzel's Tower. Pola is located in the Westerbergland region and this is a town that is the origin of the Cinderella, Cinderella fairy tale. If I could speak today, it'd be great. <laughs> Supposedly Cinderella lived in Castle Everstein with her evil stepmother and stepsisters until she was swept away by the prince. In Hummel or Hamlin, you can follow the path of the legendary Pied Piper, who was hired to lure rats out of the town by playing his pipe. And as you may remember, he did succeed, but the townspeople refused to compensate him. So the angry Pied Piper lured all of the town's children out of Hummel, where they were never heard or seen from again. To end the route, there's Bremen. So Bremen is home to the fairy tale of the town musicians, a donkey, a dog, a cat and a rooster who left their owners to become musicians in the city. But on their way through the forest, they found a house, scared a band of robbers and just decided to stay, stay there for good. If traveling on this route, we do recommend the Radisson Blue Hotel in Bremen. It is a four and a half star luxury property in Bremen's city center near to the Schnorr Quarter, which is a famous area town um, of the town center. The Radisson Blue Bremen offers 235 air-conditioned accommodations with safes and complimentary bottled water. Beds feature down comforters. There are flat screen televisions with digital channels, free Wi-Fi, it is air-conditioned, smoke-free, 24-hour front desk with 24-hour room service, 24-hour fitness center, restaurant and bar on property. Now, Germans also love our variety of over 300 types of bread and over 1,200 types of bread rolls and baked goods. Again, we're all about our worst, 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 or sausage, sausage, sausage. And I'd like to just talk about the Aufschnitte, which are lunch meats, which we have for breakfast, for lunch, and or for dinner. 
talk a little bit about Oktoberfest. So Munich's Oktoberfest begins each year in September. And the easiest way to figure out its start date is to really count backwards 16 days from the first weekend in October. So yes, it does start in September. The Oktoberfest is held on a large meadow of land in the city center of Munich, which is called, again, the Theresian Wiesen, or just Wiesen, as it's called by the locals. So if you want to sound like a local, don't call it the Oktoberfest Fairgrounds, call it the Wiesen. It has been held annually, pretty much, since 1810, with very few cancellations. And it was originally scheduled to celebrate the marriage of Teresa, King of, uh, sorry, Teresa of Saxony to Crown Prince Ludwig. Now, my tips for Oktoberfest, if you can make it for the opening day parade, absolutely do it. If you can get there early in the morning to try to secure a spot in the tent, do it. Although reservations are recommended, they are not always needed to have a bit of fun in the tents. My third tip, sit with anyone who will share their table with you. You need to be seated in order to order a drink or food. Number four, visit multiple tents. Don't just stay in one of them. Number five, definitely enjoy the carnival rides, maybe before you eat and drink. And speaking of eating and drinking, you're going to find deliciousness at the fest. You won't need to find a restaurant before or after. Number seven tip, if you can stay for the last night of Oktoberfest, do it. It's a magical celebration. And eight don't stay for all 16 days. You and your liver won't be able to handle it, but I'm going to say that Munich is a great city to use as a hub and spoke destination, meaning you base yourself in Munich and do visits each day to other areas. Again, the castles near Fussen, Rotenberg's romantic charm, do the historical cities of Nuremberg, Würzburg, Regensburg, Augsburg, Definitely go to the mountains, visit Garmisch Park and Kirchen, go to Oberammergau and Mittenwald, and absolutely do pay your respects at the memorial in Dachau. Now, the wonder of the Christmas season truly comes alive in Germany and Austria and Switzerland, France, Croatia, and the UK. These are just to name a few. I think everyone has Christmas markets now. At the end, this, these start at the end of each November with the beginning of Advent. So although planning starts months earlier, Christmas markets in larger cities and popular towns usually open their kiosks daily from November 25th through Christmas Eve, and some run even longer into January. So with a city of almost 4 million inhabitants, December in Berlin is all about its 60, six zero Christmas markets. Each are magical in their own right. And here you can find both indoor and outdoor markets selling unique gifts crafted by local artisans. The markets are also filled with tasty delights for every appetite from those sausages of every kind to cream kale, which is delicious, served with or without sausage. There are pop-up restaurants which serve traditional Christmas dinner of goose and all the trimmings. In Berlin, especially, to drink, we have Glühwein. So Glühwein is available all over uh, your, Germany and, and Austria. But, of course, the Berliners have a, a different take on Glühwein, which is called the Feuerzange Bolle. I'm not going to ask you to remember how to pronounce it or even how to spell it. But this consists mainly of the same ingredients as the Glühwein, but it's differences in how it's prepared. So in the words of Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life, it's really a flaming rum punch. And then two hours south of Berlin by car or by train, you can add a day trip to Dresden. Dresden's Christmas market is actually called the Striezelmarkt, derived from the Dresdner Stollen which is a German Christmas cake. It dates back to 1434, this market, and is considered Germany's oldest market. Most of the toys and gifts and holiday decorations sold here were invented really hundreds of years ago in the Erzgebirge, or the Ore Mountains near to Dresden. And did you know that those little German wooden smoker figures where you can burn incense? Those are from the Erzgebirge. 
Also, a trip to Germany in winter would not be whole without visiting Nuremberg, home to uh, the Renaissance painter and theorist Albrecht Durer and the Nuremberg trials after World War II. This historical medieval city hosts a Christmas market that dates back to the 16th century. With more than 180 kiosks and stalls, you can find wonderful holiday treats, gold foil angel ornaments, and really these one of a kind and really truly only produced and sold in Nuremberg. They're called thick vechamino. It's really a, a trinket uh, made of prunes and they look like men and women doing normal everyday tasks. They're adorable. So after some time wandering through this Christmas market, you might want to check out the DB or Deutsche Bahn Railway Museum, which is filled with rail memorabilia, real rail history, real train cars and engines and a large model train set. It is amazing. So if you have children, this it definitely is a museum to visit. How about also checking out a baking class? You and your group can really bond together and make the real Nuremberg Leibkuchen, which are the gingerbread cookies from Nuremberg. So there's nothing like the gingerbread that we, we know here. These cookies are made with eggs and honey and almond and hazelnut meal, candy lemons, orange peel, among some other ingredients. And they're really a sweet treat to either start or end the day in Nuremberg. And then we'll end with just Christmas in, in Munich. So Munich's Christmas market held in the Marienplatz outside of the Ratzkeller and just below the Glockenspiel. At this Christmas market, you're going to find the largest manger market. Yes, I said manger. So complete with lanterns for the manger, fodder for the animals, and gifts of the Magi. You have also in Munich the Viktualenmarkt. This is a year-round market and just a short walk from from the Marienplatz, where you're bound to find the Weihnachtsmann or Father Christmas, or better known to us as Santa Claus. And this next picture may scare you just a little bit because that's how we Germans and Austrians are, but really not to be missed. It's called the Krampuslauf. It's a parade of those Christmas devils and fur clad alpine monsters that descend onto the city to find the naughty children and all those naughty adults. And the Krampus are fabled to scare away the dark spirits of winter. So they're actually, they're good. All those who see them in their parade also get a little bit scared, but the Krampus are only found in Bavaria and Austria. So you're not gonna find this tradition in any other German state. If you're looking for this experience, it's definitely in Bavaria or Austria. So a couple of things to know before you go. As always, policies, procedures, requirements for entry into Germany or whichever country or countries you choose to visit are continuously changing. You're going to want to work with Angela, who will assist you in providing resources. But just make sure that you're also aware of the, these continuously changing requirements for travel and where to find the latest information. Now, while it's great, my second recommendation, to integrate various cities and regions into a customized independent European itinerary, I'm just going to ask that you check to make sure you allow yourself ample time to enjoy, relax, and immerse yourselves. When to go? I'm going to say year-round. It's, it's really up to you. You and Angela will work on the date you wish to travel. She's going to check with us for any blackout dates. Um, this just really brings me to my last tip, which is ever so important right now. I say this in, in every webinar that we do, every lunch and learn that we do, but really the cities and sites highlighted in this presentation are really top cultural, historical, and culinary getaways for travelers, not only from North America, from the United States, but from all around the world. So it is going to be understandable that flights, hotels, and sightseeing options are going to get full in advance. Now, May through September is peak season. If you're planning your trip then, I recommend to book at least six months in advance. Um, if you're just thinking about traveling in 2022 now, think about calling Angela today. Now, because of pent-up demand and, you know, other restrictions to travel in 2020 and 21, we are absolutely seeing an amazing, 
amount of requests for vacations. So given this, please, please, please start working with Angela today. I also mentioned, and I mentioned this in every Lunch and Learn, but really seriously, especially for Germany, there in 2022, there are two festivals that are held every 10 years, okay? falling into 2022. You have the Floriad in Amsterdam, Holland, and you have the Passion Play in Oberammergau, Germany, which was canceled in 2020, moved to 2022. Now, each of these festivals operate from the end of April through October. And if you pair that along with all the other festivals, like we talked about, Oktoberfest in Munich, Salzburg's Harvest Fest, the Christmas markets in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, the UK, Croatia, and more. Um, and really other festivals as well. So if we look at Bastille Day in France, Edinburgh's Military Tattoo, the running of the bulls in Pamplona, all of this is going to impact travel for 2022. So many people are getting on those flights and traveling to Europe again. And, and I couldn't be happier about this, but I want you to be able to get that space that you're looking for. So while there are so many corners of Europe to explore, this does wind down the suggested itinerary. But again, your customized European adventure is only limited by your budget and by your imagination. So give Angela a call today, start that conversation. And with that, I will just say thank you for allowing me to present Germany to you. There are many more points of interest in Germany, so much to do, um, but we don't have time today. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share. I'm gonna bring back my actual live video of myself. And then, uh, do we have any questions? You're on mute. Yeah. So one question of obviously, um, how, what are the current um, COVID restrictions um, in that area? So for, for most of Europe in general, it is fully vaccinated. So if you have had the Pfizer, the Moderna, you're, you're looking at, at this point, the two vaccinations, the, the first and the, and the second. If you have the Johnson Johnson, it's just the one. But with that, again, everything is changing. It's still constantly changing. So we may be coming out of COVID now. Um, there may be new rules tomorrow, next week, you know? So I know, I'm just speaking to your audience right now, I know Angela knows where to find the information through Europe Express, and she can also help you to find information online uh, because there is some onus on each of us as a traveler to know what to do next, where to go for those, those resources. Okay, that's good for sure, yeah. definitely so. I'm going to say that um, the Oktoberfest, the uh, always in, in awe with the Christmas market anyway, so that, but what I was very interested in was the fairy tale road. That story with the dog and the cat on the <laughs> roof, like, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the, it's really one of the German fairy tales. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think a, a lot of people know about mm -hmm. that one in particular, but some of the other ones, I mean, you know, the Cinderella, the mm -hmm. castle and the, the Sleeping Beauty and, you know, the Brothers Grimm, who doesn't know about right. the Brothers Grimm, you know, mm -hmm. so that's not an organized tour, but it's mm -hmm. something that because you're doing an independent itinerary, you can help to, to stop them in each of these cities to see what your clients would want to see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right, the guys. Well, there you have it. Okay. And all the answers journey. to your questions are in there. So yeah, definitely. So, so as I mentioned earlier, I um, have more questions that I'm going to share right after this, um, this live is done and I'm going to post them in the group. I'm going to give you until Friday to answer them. Um, and then those who answer all four questions will be able to get a special prize from me. And this is not included in the weekly um, month 
uh, anniversary month prize giveaway. This is something separate. So, um, but make sure that you are watching the replay if you have aren't on here now. Um, make sure you do watch it and answer the questions, and um, we'll go from there. Okay. Well, thanks again, Rose. We appreciate your time. Next month, we have um, April the 20th, I believe that's the correct date, and we'll be talking about Portugal, okay? All righty, you guys, I will see you soon. You guys have a great rest of the day. Enjoy Wednesday. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. I'll be in touch. I'll see you guys live again soon, all right? Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.